How will Djokovic do at Monte Carlo? Will he roll the dice in the land of casinos? We'll see how he goes. It's the start of the clay season. Djokovic is saying that his expectations are low for Monte Carlo, which is a bit of a change in wording from the champion. He still says that he wants to peak in Paris, which we have heard the last few years. But coming off that shock defeat against Luca Nardi, he can't expect much, can he? Of course, he's still world number one, but he's not playing like it. He's not truly playing like it. And at this stage in the year, he's still with zero titles, as the article does suggest. This happened as well in 2022, but that was under a different scenario in which he was not able to play in the bulk of the tournaments to begin the year. He hasn't been able to carry on from that hot streak to end last year, which was one of his greatest ever seasons. And now he finds himself in a Monte Carlo draw where he would need to beat Carlos Alcaraz and Yannick Sinner to win the title. You never know with this player. He's truly one for comebacks and to be able to play his best when you least expect it. So I wouldn't write him out just yet. And going into this clay season, there's a lot to win, a lot to play for for Djokovic. Not only the French Open, but also Roland Garros. So he wants to make sure that these best of three tournaments serve him well as good preparation for the Olympics. And playing on French territory, don't forget Monte Carlo is actually played in France. It's probably as good as preparation you're going to get apart from playing at Roland Garros. He hasn't won here in eight years. However, if he does win, he will unlock a new piece of tennis history. That is, Djokovic would become not only the first ever player to win all nine ATP Masters tournaments, not once, not twice, but three times. No other player has won once, so that's crazy. No other player has won <laughs> all nine Masters tournaments nine times, once, let alone three times, which is crazy. He hasn't played well here as of late, but perhaps this year is going to be different. He hasn't been playing very well and even though he might be deflecting a little bit he seems to be pretty hungry and he looks pretty uh, intense in practice I must say he has considered that Yannick is the best player in the world so far this year has had tremendous success and that he has learned from his mistakes of the past and now he's a different player he's more of a big time player don't forget at this stage last year although Djokovic did win the Australian Open he was in a similar vein of form it's nothing new for Djokovic especially at this stage of his career he's still world number one so whatever he says he is still the man to beat and here we go Djokovic's path Two Monte Carlo titles. This is being recorded prior to Safunian's match. So I do expect him to win. Musetti has been Fritz. So likely Musetti, unless Arthur Thiels can do something special there. Rublev or Dimona, we'll see. Alcaraz, Rude, that's a big one. You expect Talos Alcaraz to make it into the semifinals, albeit he is dealing with a bit of an elbow slash arm injury, which he used to have in the past, you know, when he ties up that right arm in that bandage of sorts and of course Sino or Zvedev in the final most likely maybe maybe Klaverdev <laughs> you never know but it's a tough tournament it's quite an elite Masters tournament you're instantly into the round of 32 these tournaments are now becoming less and less they're trying to expand the Masters tournaments into two-week events and Monte Carlo is not going to be one of those tournaments to be expanded so we'll see and another piece of history for Djokovic in breaking another record becomes the oldest world number one ever. That is, I think, about 36 years, 320 days, surpassing Roger Federer. And he still has a few more weeks guaranteed at world number one, probably until at least the start of Roland Garros or at the end of Roland Garros. We'll see what happens this clay season. Who knows? Maybe he can even surprise us and win a couple of tournaments to extend that lead. You never know. He could have actually extended it quite a bit more if he was just to play as we expect him to play. Not to win necessarily, but just to make the later stages at Indian Wells in Miami. But of course, he lost early in Indian Wells and pulled out of Miami. But he's still world number one, so you have to give him that. And he just keeps extending this world number one weeks at number one record. It's crazy. It's unforeseen. How long will it last? We'll see. Perhaps this current reign will end sometime soon but if he's able to keep winning these majors it keeps giving him a great chance of being in that world number one spot so how long will he last here we'll see that's for you guys to say have a debate in the comments down below i do believe we'll see a bit of an improved djokovic a more a djokovic that is ready to fight a djokovic who will use this tournament as a trampoline to bounce into the rest of the clay season so enough of me what do you guys think 
how far will he go? Let me know in the comments down below. And just quickly to touch on the Carlos Alcaraz situation, he has two problems with injuries. First up, he has that forearm injury, which I mentioned prior, and he has heavy strapping on his arm. He seems to be in somewhat physical discomfort, but it's nothing new for him because he used to wear this all the time back in his younger days, even though he's only 20, whereby he has this strapping on his arm. I'm pretty sure he stopped his practice a bit earlier than he was supposed to, which is concerning. And second of all, Carlos Alcaraz does admit that he has lingering problems with that ankle injury he sustained at Rio. He needs to be careful or really careful on his ankle because it's his first time playing on clay since that injury. And of course, it happened on clay. He went back on hardcore after and it's somewhat lingering for him. So he needs to stay careful, he needs to stay warm. Perhaps he's thinking about it too much that, you know, after an injury, you can overthink some shots, try to avoid the situation which can actually make it worse. Hopefully Alcaraz is going to be fine. Hopefully the injury or the injuries are going to be somewhat negligible and hopefully we'll get an Alcaraz-Jokic matchup in the semifinals. Until next time.